What's happening, everybody? It's about 3.30 in the afternoon. I am tired as hell. I've been out here since 5 a.m. working on this damn truss, but I came in to take a break and kind of take a nap, but see all this cloud cover? This is like ideal for me to work in, even though it looks like it might rain. But being out here in the sun just nonstop, uh, just kind of breaks you down after a while, so I had to take a break. But I said, you know what? I got to get out here and get this, uh, get this going. So right now, my son is putting a wall up around our pallet structure. Um, I call it a pallet structure, but it's a pallet shed. But there's a lot more going on with this. Like I said, I'll make a video about this eventually. Um, but you can see right here, it's just putting up a wall. We're gonna put up uh, about six to seven foot wall here around this. And this will also have a, a plaster, a concrete stucco basically around the outside of it. And then eventually I'll get around to getting these buildings um, their final coat of stucco as well. But in the meantime, I figure I'll take you over here and show you what I got going on here and just give you all an update. Okay, so if you're new to the channel, uh, this is a 2,000 square foot barn dominium that I'm building mostly solo. Um, basically, I started this thing over a year ago and just been just plucking away at this thing, um, getting things going. But when you're working by yourself, things move very slow. So anyways, I got two parts, uh, two sides of the stem wall done. Got my post here. Under each post, there's four foot of concrete uh, with a bunch of rebar. The rebar ties this wall together. Um, so anyways, these poles are five inch by five inch by a quarter inch thick. Um, so they're pretty thick, nice stout um, posts. And the reason I went with these versus doing, because this is a uh, very similar to a post frame construction build. In fact, it is a post frame construction build, just a little bit differently. A lot of times the post frame construction, they will bury the wood poles directly in the ground, uh, i.e. a pool barn. But decided I didn't want to go with the wood post because I was doing some reading about it and some people were saying that over time, what would happen is, is the trusses would actually pull on the posts and kind of make them, the wood basically would start sagging. Um, and, and you hear that? So the wood would uh, start sagging and all that. So I decided, you know what, I'm just going to go with a steel frame um, and, and just go that route. So anyways, uh, one of the things we ran into challenge wise was that we wanted a single slope building, um, a mono slope, if you will. Um, because our rainwater collection, I wanted to all be on one side of the house. I didn't want to have a bunch of elaborate gutter systems um, and also just the overall simplicity of the build itself. Um, I just wanted something simple and it's, this is about as simple as you get except for the trusses. Um, these trusses Another thing here is we wanted a clear span build. So not only did we want like a mono slope or um, single slope build, but we also wanted uh, a very open floor plan. And with an open floor plan, you know, you want your trusses to be able to basically span without support in the middle. And the only way that was going to be done is by doing uh, these types of trusses. Um, I could have went with maybe an I-beam, but those were really expensive, so I decided I wanted to fabricate my own trusses, and that's what made me get to this point. Now, these are going to be Warren trusses. Um, there's going to be six of them, and you can see what I've done here is I've set up on top of my truck a platform. All those poles up there basically hold the steel in place so it doesn't sag. And you can see the top cord there. I just did my first weld today. So the top cord is welded right there to the end. And next I'm going to be putting up the bottom cord. That's what I'm doing right now. And I'm going to be setting that, getting the distance set right. And basically just doing all my measurements and stuff to just lock it in place. And then I will finally be able to start doing my webs for inside the truss and I'm doing it in 20 foot sections so I'm gonna get this 20 foot section done first and then I'm gonna come over here and do this 20 foot section and connect it 
right there in the center so that's the idea with this and it did come with uh, some challenges here because you know working solo once again there's a lot of things that if you just look at this and don't think through the problem like I have you would look at it and just say well why don't you do this or why don't you do that but everything that I came up with doing this by myself ended up needing more people um, whether I run an equipment or not like I, I could have got a telehandler for example um, or even uh, what initially what I was going to do was so you see that hoist up there okay it's covered up right now um, I had a hoist malfunction also so anyways the hoist is um, is covered okay so that is a hoist up there and a hoist there. I fabricated these hoist arms, I guess you'd call them, so they could slide over top of these posts, okay? So I made them this way, and then you can see here, you can actually um, bolt them in. So if I ever wanted to say, put these on a different size post, I would be able to do that and just screw it to, to the uh, new post uh, jig there. So it slides over the post. You can see I have a wire here that uh, goes to the top here and it's got a turnbuckle on it here to kind of tighten it so it doesn't sag. So I have one here and I have one here. Initially the idea was going to be to do a simple, um, I was going to build the truss on a table over there on, on that shipping container. I had built a 40 foot table and I was going to just fabricate the truss there and then I was going to move it over here and stage it and then lift it with these hoists but the more i started looking at it and the more i started going through it in my head and just finalizing it it, it made me realize was like dude you're not going to be able to do this by yourself not like that because it's one thing to hoist it up but it's another thing to get it exact and to try to lift it in place say and bolt it in place it was just uh, it was going to require more than more than one person so i decided you know what instead what i'm going to do is build a platform on top of my truck here and then i'm going to do the fabrication on the spot and the reason this works so well is because not only for this project but for the other parts of my build where say i have to put up the purlins and the roofing the sheathing and all the metal this is going to make it so much easier because i can just walk on top of that platform i can have my sheets brought up there after these trusses are done and i can just take my tractor set the sheets on top of my truck and i can work right from the top of my truck i have all this extra room and i can work 10 foot sections at a time and just go all the way down the line here and not have to worry about coming up with all these systems to lift all my uh, pieces of plywood and all that stuff up so so this turned out to be a really good idea for me because I said you know I'm killing two birds with one stone and that's always a good thing here and you know I feel like now I can you know take my time and make sure that I'm doing these trusses the right way it does have its challenges uh, keeping things level and, and you know from moving you know like we get these monsoons now so these things can come out of nowhere and all of a sudden you got 40 or 50 mile an hour winds so so, you know that's the kind of stuff you got to think about when you're doing something like this but you can see all the bracing I have up there um, and it's all you know basically just anchored down to my truck so unless it's gonna blow my truck over um, we should be good to go but like I say you can hear the storm coming right now um, so yeah I probably should get working right now before uh, it starts to rain on us at least I got to get up there anyways and cover my stuff up I have a whole setup up there I'm gonna take you up there and show you real quick Okay, so first I'm going to show you, this is usually where I come out in the morning and I set up shop. I open the doors on the side of my utility bed. I set my bag there. I got my drink, my tea, got my water, got everything set up. And then what I'm going to do here is if I need a helmet, I'll put my helmet on. If not, um, I'm going to get my welding helmet. But uh, then what I do is I put on this harness. I don't know if you can see it right here. So I'm wearing a harness. And I have uh, a series of wires up here to hold me in place because I have almost walked off this truck a half dozen times already. And so I, I basically clip myself in when I get up here. And I'm going to show you how I get up here. I may not be able to get any work done after all. Um, looks like there's a good chance it might rain. So you see that wind? You hear that? That's what happens. So this is like I said, out of nowhere. I mean, it was sunny when I came inside, now it's not. So anyways, 
So here we are up here. What I'm doing here is a little dangerous, so I'm gonna pause this first. Okay, so here we are. Here's one of my wires. This is just an old rock climbing harness that I had for some reason. I don't even rock climb, but I have it. Um, so here you go, I clip myself in. So when I walk, I can walk over here. And then when I get to the end, I can have this wire, which is usually over here. So when I get to the end of this section, I clip myself in here. Son of a bitch. Jesus. And it comes a lot quicker when you're doing it with two hands here. So anyways, but then you see I have myself connected here. So then when I get up here, top of the highest part of the platform. So this is a 14 foot post up here. Now I am clipped in here. So you can see how this works. Now I did my first set of welds today on the actual truss. See here, I just put some uh, welds here. It's already bolted in, but I'm gonna put more welds on here actually. And uh, you can see here, I got this top cord welded. This isn't complete. I'm gonna put a piece of plate up here to connect it um, here and I'll have that welded into place. Um, I had to weld on a piece of rebar loop here for my hoist so I could pull this one up. Um, so yeah, this one's in place. I've got it anchored to all these different spots here. I had to fabricate all these. These are adjustable at the base here. These are railroad tie plates. And you can see what I did here is I took carriage bolts and I basically made a hole here and put one of the uh, nuts in there and then made it to where I could adjust these so I could keep this part level. So when I'm doing my truss, it's level, okay? So, <laughs> you see the rain we got coming right there, right? It's on its way, so, uh, and I can feel it and I can smell it. So, uh, it looks like we're gonna get rained on here. But the idea here is not only do I come up here to work, but I also store a lot of my stuff up here. So the system I have, so my stuff doesn't get ruined and rained on. All my drills and electric equipment here, it is uh, stored in these buckets. So I use a bucket system to put all my stuff, my drills, my drill bits, my, my uh, angle grinders, and my welder here, my little welder. I just uh, put a cover on top of it, a tarp, and then I just uh, put a bungee cord on it, and that's that. What these are right here, so if I show you what these are, these are actually um, screens that I made. So these right here, you can see I have a piece of tarp that goes here to here. I clip it in and I clip it in. And then I also clip it on the other side. I have another section of tarp. So when I'm welding, I don't have sparks flying all over the place and it kind of keeps the keeps everything kind of at bay so I don't have stray sparks that are going to take off and catch something on fire. So, and also for anybody that's looking out, they don't have to constantly see the light from the welding. So I just figured I'd do that as a courtesy as well. So I have three of these things here that are also anchored down to the truck platform. And uh, that's how I keep, uh, keep the sparks at bay. So anyways, yeah, it's coming. So I'm going to go ahead here and just pack up my stuff and then uh, go back inside.